Welcome to tonight's Citywide Sports Network College Basketball Telecast on KCWX in San Antonio. So we open the basketball season with the I-35 rivalry between UTSA and Texas State from Strahan Coliseum in San Marcos. This is Mike Lefko with Chuck Mekatenik bringing you what's always an exciting matchup. And welcome to the Gun Automotive Group pregame show. It's presented by Gun Automotive Group, where buying your next vehicle is real simple. It's only game two of the season, but as always, there's a little extra juice, Chuck, right when you get UTSA and Texas State matching up. Every single time, you know, we talk about this being a blossoming rivalry on the football field. Well, in basketball, it's been going on for an awful long time. UTSA creeping up now on 40 years of playing basketball. Texas State a lot longer than that. They won an NAIA championship back in 1960. Now, UTSA has the all-time mark against Texas State, but Texas State won the game last year, so we'll see what gives tonight. Well, let's highlight a couple of these players that will be big in this matchup. First for UTSA, it's a true freshman. Well, if you're going to start your college career, you may as well start with a big game. I mean, Keaton Wallace goes out and gets 22 in UTSA's season opening victory, 8 of 16 from the floor, and was rewarded for his efforts. Conference USA's reigning freshman player of the week. How about for the Bobcats? They have a pretty good guard in their own right. Yeah, Nigel Pearson is one of those guys. And, you know, last year, Texas State was one victory away from going to the NCAA tournament. This kid had a big year last year, had a big game in defeat in their season opening game against the Air Force Academy. So this is going to be another guy. You know, Texas State's got some veteran guys they're really going to be leaning on. I'm interested to see how this thing plays out tonight. Plenty ahead when we come back. Chuck's keys to the victory and the rivalry series between UTSA and Texas State. As you know, Gun Auto keeps things real simple. We're going to make this real simple, Chuck, for the road. As you know, Gun Auto keeps things real simple. We're going to make this real simple, Chuck, for the Roadrunners. To win this game, they'll have to do what? Well, the first thing they don't want to do is panic. This is their first road game, and they got a bunch of young guys. Secondly, keep Texas State off the glass. UTSA, a phenomenal rebounding team a year ago. 
Conversely, for Texas State, what they want to try to do tonight is value the ball. They turned it over 20 times their last game out. And then secondly, they want to limit second chance points. More on the history of this rivalry when we continue our pregame coverage. Welcome back to the Gunn Automotive Group pregame show. Time to take a quick look at the series matchup between Texas State and UTSA. Chuck, they have played a lot. UTSA had the big win at home last year. Got to be some pride for Texas State to maybe get some revenge at home tonight. Well, I think the interesting thing is, Mike, is that these programs really are in two different places. I mean, Danny Casper is starting his fifth year with Texas State. Knows the, ro the ropes a little bit better. And Steve Henson's just in his second year, but both of these teams are well coached. This is going to be a whale of a ball game tonight. Let's throw it up. Should be a good one. Opening tip in the starting lineups. Come your way next. Time for tonight's starting lineups presented by IHOP. You take a look at the starters for UTSA and Texas State. A lot of youth jumps out of you. We talked about Nigel Pearson, the sophomore. Giovanni De Nicolau, also a sophomore guard for UTSA. And then the freshman, Keaton Wallace. But Chuck, up front, there's some significant size for the two 6'8", Krajovic and King for Texas State. A little more size than UTSA has. Yeah, we were talking earlier with the UTSA coaches this morning. He said, take a look at Steve Henson. You're going to be amazed at some of these small lineups that we run out there. Now, both of these teams, you'd have to say, are defensively based. And UTSA, in turning things around under Coach Jensen last year in his first year, the key was defense and rebound. They weren't a particularly good shooting team last year. So we'll see if they can kind of figure that out as the season goes along. And for Coach Casper, they run like a motion offense, 10 or so sets, ball screen offense, but again, they're going to get after you defensively as well, like do a lot of full court man pressure stuff. We'll drop into some zone, but this would be a pretty good tilt tonight. 
This building gets pretty loud. UTSA struggled on the road last year, just 2 and 15. We're underway. Game two of the season. And it feels like a little more high intensity of two teams just a little over an hour away. Keaton Wallace took over in game one with 22 points. And there's Nick Allen, a long two-pointer to get the scoring started. Yeah, got a wide open shot early and made the most of it. Found the bottom of the net. The first half of tonight's CSN basketball telecast brought to you by North Star Dodge. Open Sunday. It's your savings destination. Texas State wants to play that physical, slow it down kind of game. Pearson, no good, tipped around down to UTSA. They have a significant rebounding edge, led Conference USA in rebounding last year. I was trying to get a quick shot up, did. Just wasn't able to find the mark. That's what Steve Henson said. They want to get it out, they want to run. You notice this UTSA team, maybe a little undersized compared to some of the opponents they'll play. Davis, in and out, Texas State still can't find it. They've started 0 for 2. They Nicolau, the sophomore, played in every game last year, one of two freshmen, along with Byron Fronin, to do so for UTSA. There's Fronin, quick touch to the corner. For three and a swish by Austin Carr. Outstanding ball movement by UTSA, kicking that thing around on the left side and finding the wide open guy in the corner and knocked down the three. Roadrunners have started two for three from the floor, and they've jumped out to this five to nothing lead. And they are a good three-point shooting team under Steve Henson. 700 plus games with a made three-pointer. Fronin nearly had a double-double last year against Texas State, grabs the board, and will slow it down in the half court. Carr again, too strong. And there's a little bit of that physicality. Once again, the first half of tonight, CSN Basketball Telecast, brought to you by North Star Dodge. Open Sunday, it's your savings destination. Well, I think early on, you're getting a chance to see what UTSA basketball is all about. They've done an amazing job already getting those boards. On the defensive end, no second chance points allowed, obviously. Coming up with an early offensive rebound there on the other end, although the possession is going to go back to Texas State. UTSA showed a little bit of full court pressure, dropped it back. That's an area Texas State has struggled in. 20 turnovers in the loss at Air Force. And despite that, they still almost won. 65-57, dropped that narrow game at the Air Force Academy. But they have had 20 plus even in the two exhibitions that they played this year. Jovic stepped back, in and out. Texas State can't find it. But an offensive rebound by Emmanuel King, who rises and lays it in. Emmanuel King was really big for the Bobcats last year as they made their playoff run in the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. Big force in the middle and a shot blocker extraordinaire. Allen started the scoring, goes down to Fronin. Oh, actually, that was De Nicolau. Got it short, but tipped out of bounds by Texas State. We take a look at Texas State's first basket of the night. It was good old-fashioned bully ball. King putting his shoulder down and rolling to the hoop for two. That's one aspect UTSA is missing. One of their could have been star freshman Adrian Rodriguez injured his knee. He's out for the season. Injured it in the second half the opener. In UTSA's win against East Central. And Steve Henson really raved about this guy, Adrian Rodriguez. So they don't have the size that a Texas State has right now. And King, the 6'8 forward, certainly took advantage. Yeah, and they talk about the loss and the injury. They lose a really nice post-up player in all that as well. So UTSA is going to have to do some damage from the outside, probably as the season goes along more and more game in and game out. Pearson, the big scorer for Texas State, blocked away by Fronin. Here's the pushing ability of the Roadrunners. Dave Nicolau, got it! UTSA getting a lot of wide open looks here in the early going as Texas State tries to find itself defensively here in the early stages of this ball game. They really started to improve their three-point shooting. Shot 35% in the opener. And there's a travel and another turnover for Texas State. That's their second. Yeah, to your point, 
This team is going to have to shoot threes and make them for a high percentage, especially with their lack of height. And they're certainly off to a great start tonight shooting the basketball. Yeah, Nicolau was in double digits 12 games last year and provided a good chunk of the scoring in that backcourt role. An 8-2 UTSA lead. This is a team that did stifle Texas State last year, the 63-48 win in San Antonio. And there's another freshman, Javon Jackson, who's just checked in. Six-foot freshman guard from Puerto Rico. And he picks up Davis across half court. Tyler Blunt going to find some space down low on the screen. And Blunt fires. In and out, Texas State hasn't lifted the lid yet on this one. Just one made field goal. They're one for seven. How do you get this crowd back into it, Chuck? Uh, kind of been taken out of it in the home opener so far. Yeah, a little bit of a slow start, but you know, a long, long game, that's for sure. Two minutes scoring drought for the Bobcats, and it ends right there with a scooping layup by Blunt. Blunt was another young man that played very well for Texas State a season ago in their long run. You say getting up another jack and another three. Nick Allen get a step back and hit it the 6'8 junior. It's his first May three of the season. He's got five points to lead all scorers. When you shoot threes at the rate that UTSA is, and you aren't going to lose many basketball games. Letting them play on early. UTSA has switched on almost everything. There's a foul three, no good, but three free throws coming up. UTSA surging from distance. The Roadrunners, three for five from three. They've jumped out to an 11 to four lead. Early going, first half. Tonight, if the Roadrunners score more tonight, you can score for less Sunday and Monday at Mattress and Furniture for less. If UTSA scores more than 65 points in tonight's game, you'll get a 15% discount Sunday and Monday at all three Mattress and Furniture for less locations in San Antonio, where it's beautiful inside. A trio of free throws for Texas State, but this is an aspect they struggled in last year against UTSA. Shockingly, only making 42%, 8 for 19 from the free throw line. A little bit of a struggle early here from Marlon Davis. Well, I think for UTSA, you know, you got exactly what you wanted on the defensive end. You forced the guy into shooting a shot and just got a little lazy up there at the perimeter. Sent the guy to the line. 11 to 5, and CSN's first half scoreboard is sponsored by John Wayne Service Company. When you need heating, cooling, plumbing, or electrical help, make just one call to fix it all. 210 293 6700. There's the size of that state. Yeah, Terry doing a really nice job on the help defense. All goes down on the block, but there are three Bobcats there to stone him right there at the rim. Terry and Peacock giving some size. Alex Peacock 6'7, Terry 6'8. No problem for UTSA to continue to score inside. Yeah, De Nicolo doing a nice job kind of just rolling with the flow and finding some open space in the paint, knocking it down. Toby Van Rye has now checked in. Looks like he'll get called for the foul. Wrap the arm around Terry. And that's a big point of emphasis for the officials. You can put the arm, you can put the elbow on him, but you can't put really the arm and hand around him. There you see, just beating his man off the dribble. De Nicolau, young man from Italy, making his president presence felt here in the early goal. De Nicolau's got five. Nick Allen has five. And that's Pace UTSA. There's a strong drive to the basket by 
Texas State's good scorer, Nigel Pearson, the 6'5 sophomore, had 13 and 6 in the opening loss at Air Force. Well, he's going to the line. Now we'll see if he can make some free throws because, boy, he took a nice elbow right into the ear. I think that's the hardest thing you do if you're a score like Nigel is, is you take the shot, you get to the free throw line, and now you got to kind of shake the cobwebs off and try to knock a couple down. And that replay and all of our first half instant replays are brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. When you or your family need help, call Thomas J. Henry 24-7 nights and weekends 2-1-10-656-1000. See if one of these free throws can get Nigel going. A little bit of a cold start for him from the field. A full court pressure for the first time from Texas State. This is where the freshman of UTSA may be tested. But Jackson brought it up without issue. He's looking back to over Van Wilborn. Nothing there for the 6'3 sophomore. Texas State will settle it back in. Here's him. Shuffle the feet. Second travel call tonight already on Texas State. Well, it was interesting. You know, we were watching shoot around this morning, and UTSA worked a lot this morning under Coach Henton trying to break full court pressure and doing it rather routinely. The first time they get that look in the ball game, an early turnover. So we'll see if they can adapt as this game goes along. Dion Lyle to splash into the paint and another travel. Well, a travel fast early on. And that's another point of emphasis, if you will, for the officials to really have to make sure they've been watching the feet to make sure that ball is put down first before any shuffling of steps this yeah, year. Yeah, I kind of like it. I mean, it's gotten a little loose on a lot of different levels, and it is kind of nice to kind of tighten things up and and make it something that the officials are going to keep an eye on. You don't like the LeBron James crab dribble <laughs> and spin into the paint and take six steps? Uh, he's not the only one. Davis for three, in and out. Offensive board, Peacock in trouble. And it rolls into the bench. How about the one from Westbrook last year? <laughs> Taking the ball up the court out of bounds and just walked about seven or eight steps. Kind of just skipping, the ball the yeah, wandering around. Didn't even think he was doing anything wrong. That's how <laughs> right. laissez-faire it is in the NBA. But you busting out the early French. I like that. UTSA busting out the little early floor slam. Get fired up out of that dead ball. Davis scooping layup left short. Terry the putback. That's what size can do. 6'8", Eric Terry. Yeah, you never know. You know, your guy beats his man off the dribble, misses the layup, and because you're hustling, you end up getting a tap in the two points. A little mini run here for the Roadrunners, or for the Bobcats, rather, if the Roadrunners miss a shot. Davis will slow it down. And a three! Hits him on their feet from Isaiah Curley. Junior transfer from a Clinton Community College. This is the guy that Danny Casper raved about this morning, said he can develop into one of the better guards they've had here. He was super pumped about knocking down that three, too. He was headbutting himself with his fist as UTSA answers on the other floor. But I thought what was interesting, too, is he talked about he's had five players during the course of his coaching career all from McLennan, and he's talked about all of them being standout performers from that Juco. A nice little pipeline developing here into San Marcos. Pearson answers with another three. Well, after Texas State couldn't hit early, they've knocked down back-to-back -back trays to pull this within one. Yeah, both teams doing an outstanding job now of hitting those open shots. A flow to this game right now. Jackson answers anything you can do, I will do as well. Young man from Puerto Rico knocking down the long three. Like the arc he put on that ball. He likes to pop those from behind the arc, went three for four in the season opener against East Central. Strong fight to the basket, tip back around to the Roadrunners. This is a little bit of a mix and match between the starters and the bench right now for UTSA with Jackson and Allen in there along with Wallace. And Jackson bumped on the drive. Jackson with a really nice head and shoulder fake that time. 
Look at Jackson finding space, stepping back, knocking it through. It's a tight one here. UTSA up four. To 14 over at Texas State. Tonight's Sun Belt standings brought to you by HEB. No score does more than HEB. Texas State picked to finish sixth this year in the Sun Belt, and they made that run to the conference tournament championship last year, upset the one seed in the semis, and then just narrowly lost to the six seed Troy in that conference championship game. Well, every year under Danny Casper, they've gotten a little better and a little better, and we all know he can coach. He's won everywhere he's been. At. That was the Texas State team much different than this one, though. They lost four of their top five scorers. The only one returning, Nigel Pearson, including Kevin Gilder Tilbury, first team Sun Belt selection. And he's going to be tough to replace. 16 points and nearly six rebounds per game, who now plays in the German League. But they'll try with this collection of guards. That's Trey Lorenz Nottingham on the drive. Back to Pearson, who lays it in for two. Nice power move by Pearson. Act like he was going to shoot the three. It went hard baseline and was able to create some space and get the bunny at the other end there. And then Texas State thought they might have had something, but instead it's a foul. No, it is an offensive foul on UTSA. It is a little fake, like he's going to go right. I don't know how he got that in there. Created that little angle with his right hand so close to the rim. A nice job finishing it off. Pearson now two for four. He's got six points. He's come on strong for the Bobcats. Knocked down that three to really get momentum going back here for the home team. This was a 13 to five ball game. Texas State was up. The UTSA was up and now Texas State has gone on the run to cut it to two. The turnovers that we talked about plaguing Texas State in their opener kind of hurting UTSA in the last few minutes. Gurley steps into another. Start off the front, big board by King, and possession resets for Texas State. Nottingham, a guy still developing, a junior transfer. Nice feed down low. Peacock too strong. King the put back. Yeah, that's one of those. If you're UTSA, you got to stay after the ball. And you get the one stop, and then you got to get guy. You got to get guys filling to try to get that rebound and finish off the possession. King already has three rebounds to go along with four points. And Texas State will try to take the lead for the first time tonight. And a bump on the cut. Nick Allen just picked up his second foul. Yeah, the bigs for UTSA have got to be really careful. We talked about UTSA's lack of size and really their first game Trying to figure it out after losing one of their big guys, the season ending injury. They're going to have to kind of feel this thing out, and the guys are going to have to play. You don't play a physical, aggressive style of play, but you got to watch those fouls. Here is where Adrian Rodriguez would be huge. The 6 7 freshman would be the first one off the bench. What a cutting drive that almost went down. Or Darius Duncan. Yeah, look at Gurley right here. Now he's already knocked down a three. And just a really nice explosive step towards the basket. Did everything to finish that thing off, but at least he drew the foul. We'll get a couple of shots here at the line. Yeah, Gurley already with three back to the free throw line. UTSA has not attempted a free throw yet. Texas State now three for six in the line. And UTSA doing most of their damage from the outside so far in this one. Texas State is a team that likes to pound it inside, but they too found a little success here lately. Knocking down some threes. Early knocks down and both Texas State leads for the first time tonight and shows full court pressure. And back to Rodriguez. You don't really have that good presence off the bench yet that Rodriguez will provide, but that's what UTSA can do. Their speed and taking advantage of the taller Texas State. Well, I think the key to everything when you're trying to break full court pressure is you've got to remain calm. You know, the helpful scale feel when you you see everybody kind of charging at you and you see double teams and traps and all kinds of stuff going on. But UTSA really doing a nice job being patient there and then got it into the hands of number 35. who did a really nice job getting with a hole and 
just did everything but convert. Wilborn does miss the free throw. That's the first one the Roadrunners have attempted tonight. Not at it 20. A little more than halfway through the first. And can space. Some man amongst boys in the middle there for Texas State, really on both of these teams. They don't have a true center per se, but if there is one on the floor, he's trying to fake it. It's 33. He's the biggest guy out there. UTSA started so hot from three, they've now missed their last two. Texas State continues to lead. King feeling it, why not go back to him? Yeah, you got a lot of things going on on the perimeter, and as a defense, you're worried about guys getting an open three, and then you can just dump it down to 33 and let him do his thing. He just missed a shot. Foul on the floor. And UTSA trying to get it back. Texas State has surged into the lead. Bobcats on top by two. Wing of this one. And tonight's Sunbelt scores. Take a look at last night's Sunbelt scores, rather. Georgia State to the early uh, win over Rice. And Lamar just got by Coastal Carolina. A UT Arlington was picked to win the lead. Georgia State was picked second. And one in progress tonight, Western Kentucky. On top of Kentucky Wesleyan. A lot of contact. And Toby Van Rye will go to the free throw line. Now, big foul before that timeout into the break. Emmanuel King picked up his second. So now both starting centers, Allen and King, with two first half fouls. And that's a big loss for Texas State. He had been really solid down low. You know, Van Rye, though, you look at his line against East Central. You know, you come out and you hit an early three like he did, and then all of a sudden, the world is your oyster. You know, he gave a little head fake and was able to get to the bucket as well. Young man from Fort Collins, Colorado, wasn't able to finish off the bucket there, but hit her in a trip to the free throw line. So, you know, I think that's important for this UTSA team. You know, you come out and hit a couple of early threes, and then see if you can make it a little easier on yourself getting to the hole. And Toby Van Rye now gets it back to a tie game. Well, it feels like this one will be very close. Right? It has the feel of two evenly matched teams, especially so early in the season when you probably don't know what you have yet. Yeah, I mean, I think depth is a big thing right now. UTSA is trying to dunk and match down a three. He's pulling the number on his back. Now Texas State's not going to light it up in three, but, you know, this UTSA team, again, very young, and Coach Henson really Pretty much having to start from scratch trying to rebuild this squad. Bobcats three for seven. Big block on the other end. Gurley and Terry got in on that. But Texas State slows it down. They do not want to really run in transition. But they do want to take threes and knock them through. Nottingham getting on the, the tray party. Yeah, the sheriff of Nottingham. All of a sudden, Texas State can't miss from behind the arc. Terry still in there with those two fouls, and right over the top, Wallace. We've got guys at the shooting range right now. Wallace, we talked about him in the onset. What a great game the freshman had in his first ever collegiate game. Maybe they look off easy there. Stuff the same edges at the other end, getting a layup. I was going to say that these guys know that there's a two point. That's right. with all the threes they've been making, but they did right there. Texas State extends the lead to a game high five. But right back, Keaton Wallace. He knocked down six of them in the opener. Conference USA Freshman of the Week has six points tonight on back to back yeah, three. It's so smooth, and you better get a man on him. You cannot leave him that wide open. He's proven he can hit you. Nottingham trying to answer. He oh, checked. Look out. Out. Scary play, and this will be interesting when they call the foul on Javon Jackson. And the UTSA bench pleading that, hey, he was there in position, boxed out. This will be an interesting look. He was just standing there, and unfortunately, 
and fortunately, it's unfortunate. I guess the call went against UTSA on that particular call, but fortunately, the young man from Serbia is going to get up and be okay, be able to shoot free throws. It's not easy. It's, it's tough because, yeah, there's contact and you see a body fly down like that. And really tough to make a call in that situation. And I think when you see the reaction of a guy that high in the air and slam down, slam down so violently, probably easy to make that call on the guy who kind of threw him to the ground, if you will. Well, it's one or of the those two. And, and when you see that much contact going on and you see Prejovic hit the ground as hard as he did. Can't blame the refs when they blow the whistle there. Priovic, 0 for 1 from the free throw line this year. Takes advantage of his first at home. Texas State lost on the road to begin the season, 65-57 at Air Force. UTSA was at home. They had an easy win over Division II East Central. And it's going to be a tough stretch for UTSA. We'll get into that uh, a little bit later, but they go on the road tomorrow to begin a stretch of three games in three days in the Bahamas. Yeah, rough city, huh? Well, right, not rough city, but the travel. <laughs> you got to come all the way back, get on a plane, get down there, and then you have to tell kids, hey, you got to be in the gym, you can't go to the beach. That's the tough part. Okay, Nikolau tries to sell the foul, no call forthcoming, so it's out in front, and a loose ball scramble goes to the Bobcats. And an offensive foul down low. That goes on Tyler Blunt, his first. Blunt was just hustling from one end of the court to the other. He was the one that kept that ball alive. It felt like once he got the ball in the corner, he should shoot it at that point, but not really sure what it was that the ref saw that he did on that play, but. Maybe a little bit of the hook, I think got his arm around. Not sure. Subs coming in and out for both teams. Remember the foul trouble. Terry with two fouls along with King for Texas State. And two fouls for both Jackson and Allen for UTSA. See these teams have been living in the three-point land so far in this one. Wallace, one of the best three-point shooters coming out of high school as well in the whole state of Texas. Showed why in the opener. And showed why in back to back shots. And that one goes on the Bobcats. Pearson gets called for his first. Well, Pearson did a really good job selling that. I was going to be curious to see which way the refs decided they were going to go with that, but they did indeed call it a block. Take a look. He was pretty darn active there, and usually it's first guy to the spot, but it looked like he was already falling backwards when he tried to set his feet. Pretty good call by the ref, I thought, right there. Not an easy call to make. The basketball is getting harder and harder to officiate, too, with the hundreds of no calls and calls per game that these guys have to make. And how big and fast the, the guys Absolutely. move, too. And so the, the block charge call is such a hand toss up in the air because of how quickly they get to a spot. Uh, now right back to Texas State on another offensive foul, this time on the Roadrunners. You can't have those. I mean, these are just, these possessions are critical for UTSA. You know, when you're a team that has to be efficient on the defensive end and on the offensive end, these turnovers are really, really come back to haunt you. As if Pearson starts to assert himself, led the team in points, rebounds, and steals. And their loss at Air Force. Priovic kicks it off his foot. They go back to the Roadrunners. That was one of those things, too, where we were talking to Coach Casper this morning as well, because as you said earlier, Texas State had 20 turnovers in their season opening game against Air Force. And he's like, you know, we really don't have a true point guard. We're trying to figure some things out here early on in the season, but he suspects that they'll get better as the year goes along. Well, one thing that should be a little more reassuring, they only had eight assists in that game. And they already have five here in the first half. Davis, coast to coast, a big block by UTSA. Keeps it underneath the basket with the Bobcats. And you see how active UTSA is on the defensive end. 
Looks like it's going to be a layup, but all kinds of hustle there on the back side. ETSA doing a really good job of hustling back there. Outstanding job, as a matter of fact. And that was the Texas State transfer, Kendall Ramlin. 6'8", senior from Houston, played here at Texas State, transferred to UTSA for his final season. And rips it away. There was some motivation back in his old gym. Ramlau has come up with two defensive stops. Carr trying to probe, not there. Scooping, touch, Ramlau all over the glass, but no go. I'll tell you what, he's been the energizer bunny so far for UTSA. Come in here and instantly get yourself on the stat sheet a lot. But still the Roadrunners trail. And they led for most of the early part of this first half. Jumped out to a 13 to five lead. And then Texas State hit another gear. Shot blocked by Wallace, and a shot clock violation. So back-to-back -back turnovers for the Bobcats, but they continue to lead. Under four timeouts, Texas State leads early, looking for its first win of the season here in game two. Just a few minutes left in the first half, and then coming up at halftime, we have the Home Vesters Halftime Show. We'll take a look at the first half and see what's in store for the Roadrunners and the Bobcats this year. Plus, Texas State Athletic Director Dr. Larry Tice will join us for a halftime interview. So a pretty impressive and loaded halftime show coming up in three minutes and 15 seconds. Yeah, and a good basketball game here tonight, too. See what gives in the last 315. And you know, for UTSA, they got a little cold shooting the ball, too, but compounded by the fact is they're turning the ball over. And although the points off turnovers doesn't necessarily hurt them, when you're turning the ball over, you're playing defense and you're not playing offense. Yeah, the defense has won out. There's been no points in the last two minutes and 50 seconds for either team. And then stuck on this 32 to 28 score. Wallace tries to change that. Good drive, can't finish. Well, that was a man-sized move there. A dipsy doodle and then power move. Not the biggest guy on the planet, but playing in the land of the Giants. 22 points, three rebounds. Two assists and two steals on Sunday. Shot clock down underneath five and another turnover by Texas State. That's their fourth turnover in the last three minutes, but they continue to lead because there's just been a complete lack of scoring here. Yeah, it's that, and you know, you could see both of these coaches kind of tinkering with their lineups, running out some different sets. And that's what the early part of the basketball season's all about. You know, both of these teams are trying to build towards conference, conference play. And so we're going to see a little bit of experimentation here and there, especially here in the early going. And you get the sense you're trying to find that secondary score. And you have a Wallace for UTSA, Pearson for Texas State, but especially for the Bobcats, they lost so much. Who is that other score? That certainly, I think, will be something that Casper will look to develop for his players here. Tell you what, 31 for UTSA is running some extra minutes the way he's playing. Pearson trying to force it in traffic, but an offensive rebound keeps it alive. Deep three. No good. They had to get that rock up because the shot clock was winding down, but now UTSA gets a breakout. Fro Fro show. Fro show. Yeah, <laughs> Fronin Fro show. First two points for Byron, Fronin the 6'6 sophomore. That's who the Roadrunners need to get going. He had 10 points and five rebounds in the opener. It was named the CUSA All-Freshman Team last year. With those long rebounds, sometimes lead to a breakout, and that's exactly what happened for UTSA. And just what they needed, the way they've been struggling, putting the ball in the hole here the last few minutes. Here you go. Ball careens off, and hey, here I go. Nobody's going to pick me up. I'll take it right down the middle like I've been coached. We'll double fake there at the end and still get her in the hole. Under 90 left. Texas State hasn't scored in over four minutes. They missed their last five shots. Pearson, step back. Off the side, no good. Chases down the miss. How about that hustle? Yeah, even if the shots aren't falling, I think coaches will love that. If you can track down an extra possession, they hustle on a loose basketball.
Davis has some space, goes up, big block, and a foul down low on the backside, and it goes on Priovic. Outstanding job of blocking out by Carr from UTSA. He's able to draw the foul here, too. Strong power move to the hole, but look at that. Just put a body on your guy and closest to the hoop. Big guy reaches over the top of you. You call it every time. Seventh team foul on Texas State. A one and one for Austin Carr, the 6 4 senior. Sure has a good basketball name, that's for sure. Spelled a little different. Just a little. Yeah. But Carr's got four points. Well, it's been balanced scoring. No one in double figures. Wallace has six to lead all scores, along with Pearson and King. And it seems like the offense kind of changed for Texas State when King got that second foul. He was just going to town down low in the glass before picking up foul number two. Yeah, and that was his problem against Air Force, too. He got into some early foul trouble. Gurley tries to end the drought, cannot. Tell you what, the energy in this building changed when 31 for UTSA got on the floor. That young man's having a nice first half. Dane Nicolau trying to essentially run out the clock for the final shot. Shot clock's going to run out before the game clock, but just a four-second differential. Roadrunners find Wallace. Carr, off-balance shot. No good. Three seconds left. Wallace throws it out of bounds off of Texas State. So a quick trigger and go here with just a second left in the half. Yeah, Carr had to jack it up, try to beat the shot clock, and then a heady move by Wallace, who's done a little bit of everything here in the first half. Getting a loose ball, and then as he was falling out of bounds, throws it off the player's leg and maintains possession for UTSA. Well, all game scoring summaries are presented by Nissan of Bernie. For better selection and better prices, visit Nissan of Bernie. Pretty good numbers for both teams. You will take about 30% in the three-point line, and UTSA dominating 6 for 11 from behind the arc. Well, I mean, that's the reason why they're in this basketball game. Points have not been easy in terms of getting to the hole and finishing in the paint. So, you know, when you don't have a lot of size like UTSA, in order to handle a squad like the Bobcats, got a little more bulk, a little more vertical on you, you're going to have to knock down shots at a high percentage. And, you know, UTSA, it's going to be tough to maintain that kind of shooting percentage from three. But you know, right now, it's keeping them in this basketball game square at 32. What are you looking for here with just a second left when you're in there? Well, it's going to be interesting because you can do a lot of things here, obviously. I mean, we'll see because you know, the clock's not going to start until somebody touches the ball, so we'll see if UTSA's got designs on taking a three or, you know, trying to set a couple of picks and maybe getting something closer to the basket. And the inbounder always wanted to watch, too. Maybe if there was a little more time left in the half. Rablau spins back. Hits twice and goes through, and it's the Texas State transfer that gives UTSA the lead into the locker room. A back and forth first half. The Roadrunners come out on top, 34 to 32. Coming up, the Homevestors halftime show. We will have plenty of coverage. Athletic Director Larry Tice will join us, and we'll go through the first half highlights and the stats. Back and forth game, Texas State trails at home. UTSA up 34-32 at the break. Call Homevestors, the We Buy Ugly Houses people, 1 800 44 Buyer. 34 to 32 at halftime. Please be joined now by Director of Athletics, Dr. Larry Tice. And what a fantastic back and forth first half. What were your thoughts on what went out there the first half? Well, I'll tell you what, it's typical UTSA, Texas State, not just basketball, but everything we do. It's hard fought, fans are into it, it's a good crowd. It's fun for being here live and for TV. And, and I'm just so glad that, you know, Lynn Hickey and I agreed to a long-term football series. And then we play each other in all the other sports because 
it's just crazy for schools 45 minutes apart not to play each other and everything every year. So since we're not in the same conference, it's great that we have a HEB sponsored series in football and, and all the other sports get to play each other. And this, the home opener, how nice is it to have a rivalry game like this to bring some juice to an early season matchup? Yeah, I tell you, they, we had a hard fought, you know, lost by eight or nine points up at Air Force over the weekend. So it was good to get back home. Uh, start out with UTSA to get the juices going and see what we have. So he's got a lot of new players out there that he's it look, it, looking at the stats. You can see both teams played, what, 10 guys and 11 guys. So like, you're getting a lot of players in there. When people are driving up, you kind of notice the, the big construction going on. Can you talk about that and what it will look like and what we can all look forward to when it's completed? Yeah, it's going to be the showpiece of not only San Marcos, but in the corridor between Austin and San Antonio. It's going to be a $65 million construction and it's going to house men's and women's basketball and volleyball and a lot of our other sports will have offices in here but those three sports will have locker rooms weight rooms training rooms but it'll seat up to 12,000 for a concert so we'll be able to do concerts or maybe horse shows or rodeos or all kinds of events here in san Marcos. so it's going to be great not only for the university but the camp the city as well and we need it because graduations we're we're doing eight nine 10 graduations a semester and there it's a full house so we needed over 10,000 seats for graduation can't wait to see what that looks like and you mentioned some of those sports that are in season those fall sports that are kind of wrapping up can you talk a little bit about the fantastic fall you have yeah we've had a great run so far soccer finished second went to the tournament volleyball won the west division championship they're the number two seed had a great run our women's cross country team who we just brought out won the first championship since 1994 Women's basketball is 2-0 and right now, winning by 17 up in Lubbock on Sunday and just won by 40 tonight over at Incarnate Word. So uh, everything looks good, and we know we just need to get football rolling with everybody else. That's that's the big dog out there, and we got to get that going too. But we've had a great run so far, and we always have had good programs here from top to bottom. So. It's a great it's a great athletic department well dr tice thank you we appreciate you coming and thank you taking some halftime to, to join us on the appreciate y'all airing the game for us it has been a fun one so far and we look forward to the second half but first more halftime coverage we'll go through the first half highlights when the home besters halftime show continues Two at halftime. We're going to take a look at the highlights and the stats, and we'll break down this first half. But first, let's take a deeper look at the Bobcats. Brant Freeman will break it down for us. Tonight, the Bobcats will look at even the season record at 1-1 one one following a season opening loss to Air Force this past Sunday. Despite the early setback, the expectations for the Bobcats are high this season following the team's 22 wins a year ago, the most of the program since 1994. What spearheaded Texas State's success a year ago? A Danny Casper staple defense, which will be key to the team's success again this year. Well, as usual, I just want them to play great defense and share the basketball and, and uh, uh, you know, just, just really give everything they have you know, is it, 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 what the focus is. Uh, you know, we, we do have some good leadership coming back and good uh, in, in, in Nigel Pearson and Marlon and Emmanuel and Nedja, and uh, these guys work hard. They're they're very coachable. Uh, they they seem to like each other like last year's team did. And don't get me wrong, we have some things we work on, and we got a lot of new faces, and they're going to make some mistakes. And and uh, so, but uh, uh, it's been one of my uh, better teams to work with. This is year five now for Coach Casper at Texas State, and the program has come a long way. In his first season, the Bobcats won just eight games and failed to qualify for the Sun Belt Tournament. This past year, the Bobcats were picked to finish last in Sun Belt, but wound up finishing in a tie for third and played for the Sun Belt Conference Championship in New Orleans. Well, I think it was a big jump for us. Uh, it wasn't a small jump. And, you know, from year one to two was a good jump. From year two to three was a little jump. But year three to four was a big, big jump. And, uh, you know, I, I dare say we came very, very close to going to the NCAA tournament. Uh, we came very close to finishing second. We lost that game at Louisiana Lafayette that we shouldn't have. And if we had won that game, we'd have been a second place uh, team. Uh, UTA had a remarkable year, and yet we beat them twice. We won two games in the CIT tournament. So uh, a lot of good things happened last year. But mostly, I think, the best thing that happened was players embraced what we're trying to teach. 
With last season's success, the Bobcats have put the rest of the Sun Belt on notice. However, Coach Casper says Texas State isn't alone in the group of contenders for the conference championship. I do think that I do think we have high expectations for ourselves, but I want to remind everyone that, you know, UTA has their best two players coming back. Uh, Louisiana lost uh, only one starter. Georgia Southern, I don't think, lost a starter. And they finished uh, tied for third with us. Uh, so there are some good teams out there that are bringing a lot of people back. Coastal Carolina has a good group coming back. Georgia State has a good group coming back. So it's a year that even though we have some, some, some leadership and some talent and some uh, experience coming back, so do some other teams. And I think staying healthy, eligible, and focused and uh, just maintaining a good attitude is going to be big for all of us, not only our team, but some other teams. After tonight's game, the Bobcats play at home again this Saturday against UT Rio Grande Valley at 4.30 from Strand Coliseum. After that, it's a three-game road trip next week in Stockton, California. For the Citywide Sports Network, I'm Grant Freeman. Well, it was a three-fest in that first half, Chuck, and let's take a look at the first half highlights, and they're presented tonight by the San Antonio Express News, real news, and real insights for over 150 years. There we go, UTSA early from deep. Yeah, I got off to the very hot start, and it didn't matter who it was shooting the threes. It seemed like they were all finding the bottom of the net, and a lot of guys had their hand in the early action for UTSA, and then for Texas State, you know, they climbed their way back into this game because they were doing such a great job crashing the boards. Not a lot of good shooting for Texas State. I mean, I think that's what they're looking at at halftime. I mean, they're getting a lot of these points just because they're using their size and their girth and their hustle inside. But, you know, when you shoot 35% in the first half and only find yourself down a bucket, I think you're thinking to yourself, hey, we got them right where we want them. We're just going to pick it up a little bit on that side of the basketball floor. But, you know, again, they're big fella. You get the king man in early foul trouble. He only played eight minutes, but scored six of their points. But I really thought for UTSA, Ramlau did a very nice job coming off the bench and giving UTSA some valuable minutes there. He was the glue guy indeed, had the putback to give them the lead, and that's the difference. UTSA leads by two, second half, up next. We are a visual medium. That's right. An arrow, two point lead for UTSA is the difference here to begin the start of the second half. Roadrunners lead 34 to 32. Already a much different basketball game than when these teams met this, uh, last year. It was 63 to 48 UTSA. But we really just got the sense, Chuck, that this would be a back and forth game and kind of down to the wire as it has been. Well, it was an outstanding first half. And I know somebody that enjoyed it immensely was Coach Danny Casper's daughter, Nicole, who's watching. She's a 2013 grad of Texas State. She's doing some modeling now in Dallas, but I know Coach wanted to say hello to his daughter tonight if they're watching at home. There's Nick Allen back in with those two first half fouls, and Allen gets the immediate bucket. He's now got seven. Yeah, he knocked down an early 3-2 for UTSA, and again, you know, with size being at a premium at UTSA, guys are going to have to really watch these fouls in the second half on both sides. All the bigs in trouble. And that will be the interesting matchup. King and Allen, both of them two fouls, battling down low. No good by Pearson. The Nicolau has pushed the pace at times. And UTSA has also been content to settle for those three-point shots. Where they're six for 12 tonight. Carr for another. No good. UTSA got exactly what it wanted there. Carr slipped around the back side. got himself an open three. Just couldn't hit it. Four defenders around Blunt, and they turn around and let him sit there, and then he gets fouled. Yeah, we've seen that a couple of times. That's the last thing you ever want to do is foul the jump shooter. Make him knock a shot down. Well, tonight's second half of CSN basketball is presented by MySA.com, the largest voice in South Texas for 150 years. 
A blunt to the free throw line for Texas State. They were six for nine in the first half. And Blunt adds to his point to it. Yeah, we see that across the board. You talked about Texas State being a little subpar from the free throw line last year. And you just see that really across college basketball in general. You know, you put such a premium on athleticism and guys that can run and jump and do all this other stuff. And sometimes shooting takes a back seat. But UTSA, I'm sorry, Texas State off to a good start tonight, though, from the line. The dying art of the mid-range jumper, right? Yeah, that's right. You can all shoot threes and dunk. That's it. Well, we can't all dunk. I don't know about you. I can't. Gotta work on that one. Around oh, every part of the rim, and Dave Nicolau pops it in. Giovanni, two of five in the first half shooting, and getting his shooting percentage back up to 50% for the ball game. 38 to 33 UTSA lead. Tonight's second half scoreboard sponsored by Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Holiday in the park from November 18th through January 7th. For details, visit sixflags.com. Blunt rhythm three. <laughs> well, Blunt knocking it down. Davis is really having a hard time finding the mark early in this basketball game. He's 0 for 7, so Blunt bailing him out. And it's the 6'2 sophomore Marlon Davis, one of those guys who didn't really start last year, steps into the starting lineup this season. Uh, UTSA continues to pour it on early here to start this second half. And Allen continues to make the most out of his shots. Comes out and hit his first two to start the second half. Now four of six for this ball game. Just like the first half, UTSA jumping out to the early lead. And Texas State fired back. The lead by as many as five before trailing the captain. And Blunt, he's going to take over. Shooter's touch there, found the front of the rim, but you know, the good shooters always seem to get that soft bounce. Ends up at the bottom of the hole. Blunt has now tied his career high eight points. And he set last year against SIU Edwardsville. UTSA trying to get up a quick three, not going to hit it. And Texas State going to try one on their end. Blunt, why not? Doing it all in the second half. Yeah, it's heat check time for 10. 10's got 11. 11 points to lead all scorers. Nicolau blocked from behind with contacts and a foul. Yeah, doing a really good job, Giovanni did, of getting to the hole. Beat his defender, got himself some space. Defender's got to go over his shoulder to create the foul there, but I'll tell you, this Blunt's got a hair trigger, doesn't he? Doesn't need much space or room. Oh, he's even hot to start the second half. Blunt only attempted three threes in the opener. He was one for three. He comes out here in the second half and starts two for two from behind the arc. You know what's interesting, talking to Danny Casper, is he felt like they're going to they're gonna have to replace both of their guards at some point this season, and obviously Blunt's doing a good job of Answering the bell here in the second half of this one. Hey, Nicolau, one for two. Now he's got eight points. Well, no one in double figures for the Roadrunners, but Dave Nicolau with eight and Nick Allen with nine to set the tone. Eric Terry came in for King. Nice to go with the top. That's the size the Bobcats have off the bench. You put in one 6'8 guy for another. Yeah, Eric Terry's got a little bit more spring in his step despite the leg wrap. Very oh, athletic stopped. move. Stopped. The put back by Carr. UTSA answering back inside. So they're having a little more success here in the second half, getting to the hole and getting some points in the paint. How about the pace of this second half early? It yeah, was 34-32 like at halftime. Now 43 all, we're not even five minutes in. High arcing three, Ooh. Jackson splashing. Action Jackson, man, it's like Steve Kerr arc on the basketball. He did have that nice fade right back into it. And of course, it's blunt again. Well, we got a ping pong match going on in this one. I like it. Oh, offense. Tyler Blunt has 14 points. And he only had two and a half time. Boy, 
De Nicolau doing a very nice job again, leading his way towards the basket and doesn't need a lot of space himself to get the shot up, gets it to fall. UTSA was picked to finish ninth in Conference USA. for a 14 and 19 season. They played some close games, but struggled on the road last year. They come out, a closely contested one in their first road game of this season. Blunt again, off the front. The place is about to erupt. And then a foul down low. Yeah, if you're UTSA, that's the one guy you can't that's leave alone. And maybe that's why he missed it. This is supposed to wide open the shot. Tyler Blunt has taken over this second half. 14 points for the senior. UTSA, though, still leads by two. To 46. There's a good shooting by Tyler Blunt. Now, let's take a look around the NCAA scoreboard sponsored by HEB. No store does more than HEB. Ranked teams holding serve, except Bucknell giving the defending national champs a little bit of a uh, run. North Carolina only up by three. And Minnesota in a single point ball game right now. Let's look around the top 25 and a couple more in the early going. Creighton on top and UCLA will tip against Central Arkansas with Suspended trio now back in the States, but indefinitely suspended from UCLA. Yeah, and I think some are wondering why the suspension is indefinite and not definite and just give them a year off. I mean, what an embarrassment for not only the school, but for the entire United States, in my opinion. Technically indefinite could be definite, but it usually doesn't end up that way. Nick Allen has done well in the Texas State Pigs. And now an offensive foul, that's Fronin. The all-freshman team selection last year started every game. Slides in to draw the charge. Yeah, Fronin's had a nice, quiet game too. He hasn't shot the ball very much and got the benefit of the doubt there. Ref said he was the first guy to the spot. Nice job sliding over and drawing the contact. All second half replays are presented by Thomas J. Henry. When you or your family need help, call Thomas J. Henry 24-7 nights and weekends, 2-1-10-6-5-6-1000. Now Fronin has just kind of filled it up. Two points, four rebounds, a couple of assists, a block, and now assisting with where to wipe up the slippery spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, both teams picking it up in terms of... UTSA shooting at a 60% clip to start the second half, and... Texas State closing in on 57%. That's what we like, more offense. That's the thing, we haven't seen a lot of bad shots either. You know, guys are, teams are working hard for open shots and they're just knocking them down. Now, potentially a big call right there. Eric Terry just picked up his third foul. He's trying to hop out and hedge. And Danny Casper is not pleased as he has to bring in his starter, Emmanuel King, who's still with two fouls. You're in kind of dangerous territory just six minutes into the half. Off balance three, well off by Wallace. He's entitled, I guess, <laughs> with the way he's played these first two games. Now shooters are going to shoot, and Wallace was nearly 50% from the three-point line in the opener. But yeah, you still miss some room when you're 50%. Nottingham thought about it and turned it over. That's the, the hesitation and the learning I think that Danny Casper talked about with Trey Lorenz Nottingham. Remember, they're trying to figure out, you know, if he's a point guard, where to put him out there on the floor as he plays the point right now. Well, you can see he's got a lot of spring in his game, and, you know, it's it's a totally different animal trying to run a team as opposed to playing the two. There's another rainbow. Straight away three, Jackson rims it in. All nine points have come on threes. Now the road runners are up with just 13 minutes left in this one. And Jackson's had a great shooting night. What was interesting, saw him a lot this morning during shoot-around, and, Really had a hard time finding the mark, just to show you what those shoot-arounds can mean sometime for what kind of game you might have later that night. With Isaiah Gurley, who ignited the crowd with an early three in the first half. Well, Gurley comes off of the bench and gets a rhythm jumper. Now he's got seven points. Froden step through, denied, and then a jump ball. Nigel Pearson. <laughs> Just the one-handed, stuff it right back into him. Well, we talked about Nigel Pearson and his prowess and his penchant for scoring the basketball, but showing some D right there. 
thrown and thought he had a clear lane and either got to go up with a left hand or kick it. Otherwise, somebody's going to pack your lunch. And with the jump ball, Texas State possession arrow favoring them, so they'll get the ball. So now Allen and Fronin out. Van Rye and Dion Lyle in for the Roadrunners. Gurley feeling it. Off the front, no good. And there's George Wilborn, the third, up with the rebound. Yeah, outstanding. Just using that fanny of his to clear out. Rhythm three there for Jackson. Thought he had it. Here comes Nottingham. Nice move in the backcourt. And then slows it down. Great job by UTSA getting back. King trying to go to work on the backup center, Van Rye. And it is a foul on Toby Van Rye. That's his second. That was a big power move by King, which we are used to seeing from his game. But Van Rye did a pretty nice job there, but Ruff saw it differently. Emmanuel King, 6'8 senior from Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Played some solid minutes against UTSA last year. And there's a foul on Texas State. That's his second and the team's fourth. He's getting a little whistle happy here. Now, there's always an adjustment, it seems like, in the early part of the season where refs are trying to dictate how they want to call the game and coaches maybe trying to figure out how to rein their teams in or how they let them play. I think these guys have done a really nice job tonight, and if nothing else, they've been consistent. You know, so it's up to the players, too, to have to adjust to what's going on and how the game is being called. And just game two of the season for both of these teams. Lyle throws it up, no good. Ball slap down to the Bobcats. But has that nice rivalry feel. We talked about the I-35 rivalry series in all sports between the Bobcats and the Roadrunners. Taking place right now between these two. Peacock stepped through in and out. Peacock was one of those guys that Coach Casper says is really going to be a player for them. Jackson runs into a three, and it pops right back down. Peacock steps in and takes the foul from the charging Wilborn. Oh, Peacock draws the foul. Texas State a chance to cut into the deficit, but the Roadrunners maintaining that slim edge. They lead by three midway through the second half. Our citywide sports network telecast calendar brought to you by IHOP. Join us Saturday night. You can watch the Marshall Thundering Herd at UTSA in football at 6 p.m. on CW35. And our next basketball game will be December 9th when Houston Baptist takes on UTSA at 7 p.m. on KCWX. Visit citywidesportsnetwork.com for our complete schedule of exciting college football and basketball games. CSN, where it all begins. Foul starting to pile up now on UTSA. Every starter in there, or all five in there right now, except for Lyle, have two fouls. And now that one goes on Lyle, so he's got a foul. Well, before we went to break, the the ball where Peacock got fouled, he's going to learn. you got to get the rock up. Because it ended up being a layup situation for Texas State. And then you don't even get to the free throw line because you're making a 10. Peacock gets it to a wide open Duncan. A defensive breakdown by the Roadrunners. Yeah, nice play there. Recognizing there was a guy free underneath the hole. Peacock picking up the assist. Duncan's got seven. Texas State back within one. UTSA, an immediate answer. Wilborn atones the defensive mishap with two. Really nice body control underneath the cup and pulling the ball up and under and getting it to roll. It's exciting seeing how much potential is on the floor for these two teams. Two very young teams still. Duncan rattles one in for three. He's starting to take over like Blunt did earlier. Yeah, it's amazing. Some of these guys, you know, in their three-point shooting, the Duncan's now two for two from three lane. And Duncan's four for four from the floor. The senior from Fishers, Indiana. But a foul on the other end. They'll put UTSA back at the line. Coming off the screen and squaring it up, knocking it down. At the line for UTSA shooting two, Jackson. 
And Javon Jackson, part of a recruiting class that Steve Henson was very excited about. Jackson, Wallace, and Adrian Rodriguez comprise a pretty impressive core for UTSA. And yes, Adrian Rodriguez on the bench right now. He's out for the year after the knee injury. But that's a core to be optimistic about. Add in some other young guys, like Thronin, who you just saw, and a Nicolau, only a sophomore. Well, the core of this UTSA team is pretty enviable. Yeah, and again, a chance for these guys to kind of grow up with one another. Again, Coach Henson having to really basically blow it up and start from scratch. I mean, when he took over, he took over a program that only won five games the year before. Got him to eight wins in conference. Tied a program record and the first Conference USA tournament win for UTSA beat the eight seed Western Kentucky. I mean, to come in like he did and then immediately win nine more games than you won the year before, I think it caught him a little bit by surprise, but he just talked about the tenacity of these young men and how ferocious they were last year playing defense and committing to getting rebounds. And that kept him in pretty much every game. And then they had some signature wins along the way last year, too. UAB, ODU, just getting a couple. Now traveling, called on Gurley. That's the ninth turnover on Texas State. And the Bobcats have really ironed it out and cleaned it up since the opener when they turned it over 20 times at Air Force. Well, I think it was a good call by the ref. I mean, Gurley was going to the hole. He was a little bit out of control. Lost his footing. Sometimes you get the benefit of the doubt. Not this time. Well, Jackson stays in. He's got three fouls, but ten points. And UTSA needs that offense out on the floor, leading by one. And I think just watching UTSA for this basketball game, they're just very efficient when they protect the ball. Thrown in. Fundamental off the glass. Yeah, the throw show. Beating his man off the dribble and throwing it up with the right hand off the glass, finding the two. I like the nicknames you have thrown out there. Got to start early so they catch. Yeah, only a sophomore, so get it latched on now. This game's been played within about five points this entire half. UTSA trying to get some breathing room. Into the zone, a step back. Off the back of the rim, offensive rebound. Pearson cleans up his own miss. Really nice job by Texas State spreading the floor, being patient, and then working it back inside. And Pearson... Making sure he cleaned up the mess inside. Pearson's got eight, but it's been a little bit more of a struggle tonight. Come on, three for ten shooting. Absorbing the contact. Wilborn gets it to go. And he'll head to the line. George Wilborn the third showing everybody how quick that first step really is. Absorbs the contact. And again, great body control to... Get the ball up around the cup and let it do its thing. Bounce around up there and find the bottom of the net. That foul also goes on Emmanuel King to his third. With still nearly nine minutes left. And now, yes, King will come out along with Peacock. So Briovich and Terry back in. And Reggie Miller has come into the game. To run the offense. Except he's only six feet tall. Well, we were wondering, you know, he's a freshman. Here's the scary thing. We were wondering, do you think he even, you know, knows or ever even saw Reggie Miller play? Probably not, but Probably I'm not. sure his daddy did. <laughs> or mama, too. Somebody named him Reggie Miller for a reason. They called him Shaw. We'll see if this Reggie can shoot like the other Reggie. Briovich pleading for a call as he threw it over the hoop. It goes out of bounds harmlessly back to the Roadrunners. Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe that he didn't get that call there. He just stepped into a shot and ball didn't get anywhere near the basket for a reason. Miller stays in, but now Blunt back in. And Tyler Blunt has 12 points this half. He'll pick up George Wilborn in the corner. Thrown in, trying to drive, and gets up out of the traffic. And a foul down low goes on Roblin. I guess Terry cleared him out and carved out some space. Back and forth ball game. Terry takes the practice free throw. He'll have time to think about that one. Bobcats trail by four, eight minutes left.
four point lead in what's been a very back and forth ball game. Let's take a look around the top 25. Presented by HEB, no store does more than my HEB. West Virginia, big win over American. And Bucknell still hanging around the defending national champions. Number nine, North Carolina. Minnesota has now opened it up against Niagara. And Creighton jumping out on top of number 20, Northwestern. And a couple of late tips with UCLA and St. Mary's, the other top 25 teams in action. Got a barn burner here, don't we? Back and forth, just feels like no team is gonna be comfortable until this game's finally over and one of them does have the win. Terry stepping up and knocking down a huge free throw right there as we tick under eight minutes left in this ball game. Again, which team is going to possess the basketball and protect the basketball? Both of these teams have proven that you can stay away from the turnovers. They're more than capable of throwing it up and putting the ball in the basket. Two big free throws. Now nine for 13, so free throws will be certainly critical when you got a game like this that's always played within possession. Terry's got six. Thrown and turned away, back out top. Dangerous pass, does get to Wallace. Wallace, shot clock low, blocked away by Terry. Outstanding defense by Texas State going to start the break on the other end. They have numbers. Miller got slotted. That's Nick Allen, his first block of the season. Yeah, nice job by Nick Allen sticking that big lefty chicken wing in there to knock it away. And that'll be a timeout for UTSA. A little chaos kind of unraveling on these last few possessions. So back and forth, ball game, Texas State brought it within a basket. UTSA clinging, they're leading 59-57. Seven. Two teams to get the sense trying to figure each other out and establish you know, their team. We will have the full breakdown coming up on the John Wayne Service Company post-game show. Interview with the winning coach, the highlights, break down the stats as we see which team kind of wins out. And Chuck, we talked about it. These coaches are really starting to build their strategy and implement their style here at their respective programs. Yeah, Coach Henson having to do it on the fly a little bit. And you know, we're really starting to see the benefits of Coach Casper and what he's all about now in his fifth year. I mean, he's won every single place he's been at, including the University of the Incarnate Word back in the day. I mean, that's where I first met up with him. He did a lot of winning there, too, before he went on to Stephen F. and took them to the tournament. 13 years there at Stephen F. Austin. Led them to an NCAA tournament and led Texas State to their first postseason appearance at CIT last year. First postseason appearance for the first time since 1997. So it would have been 20 years since Texas State played postseason basketball. And they nearly got to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, one game away. Nice drive by Tyler Blunt, who continues to tear it up here in the second half. 16 points for Blunt. And the answer, a long two-pointer by Dave Nicolau to give him 12. And it's like, free Nicolau. <laughs> He's been awfully efficient tonight, too, and UTSA really good in transition there. And Wallace is absolutely fearless going to the basket. There's nothing there. And then look at Texas State answering at the other end. You wonder if either one of these teams is going to get any amount of space or breathing room as we play these last six minutes. Hey, talk about fearless. How about a career night for Tyler Blunt to keep UTSA at arm's length and give Texas State chances time and time again. Yeah, gets a rebound there too. And you know, Blunt's the kind of kid that made his name on the defensive end. And he's certainly as good as it gets guarding the perimeter. But I'll tell you what, he's knocking him down tonight with relative ease. Blunt's got 19. And most of them have come on three pointers. Step back. The crowd would have <laughs> jumped out of their yeah, chairs. He's got a couple of heat checks tonight just to make sure. <laughs> Four made threes for Tyler Blunt. 5'11", senior from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Allen thought about it. He's going to call for a foul. That's the third on Nick Allen. Both teams are in the bonus. No free throws the rest of the way on any foul, not on the offensive end. With 5'15 left. And again, you know, these turnovers, when you possess the ball, man, it's 
Those are the things that show up at the end of the night. TSA, when they protect the basketball and run their sets, they've been pretty darn special tonight. Nigel Pearson trying to get going. Been more of a frustrating hit game for him after 13 points to lead the way on Sunday. But as even as you can get. Wallace in and out. The UTSA bench is about to erupt. Yeah. That's their three-point bomber. Crow doing a really nice job of tracking the crowd and kicking it out to the open wall. That thing went halfway down. Steve Henson has just motioned Javon Jackson to get back up. He's gone to the bench. The freshman's got 10 points but was out with three fouls. Danny Casper counters. Emmanuel King walks the scorer's table. Foul down low. Texas State wanted the shooting foul. It'll be free throws anyway because of the bonus. This is what Texas State wants to do to you. They love to pound the ball inside. Probably shot a few too many threes that I think Coach Casper would, you know, if he had his choice, he'd rather be running these offenses and pounding the ball inside. He got exactly what he wanted there. And Big man Terry's going to the line to try to see if he can get his team to lead. Terry's two for two. Knocked down both of them this half. Texas State nine for 13 in the free throw line. And that's a big one. Anything on the front end of the one and one is critical to make. Absolutely. Well, they're all going to be big here down the stretch. Especially with as balanced as this basketball game has been from start to finish. I feel like we should make some noise just to see if we can get something started here. Other very elongated motion from Terry. Just went off the back end. Yeah. Well, the basketball game went out of church. So we stay tied. Texas State led briefly in the second half, but it's been all UTSA, even though the Bobcats have been hanging around. Allen, huge, strong move, drawing the double team. Got to break a little bit across the head, it would appear. Nice spin move, two guys waiting for him. And to award the aggressive player. He's you, off in the case. You get the sense this one's going to be decided at the free throw line with what we're seeing kind of developing down the stretch here. Yeah, I mean, always hard to predict, but you know, it's probably going to come down to who's going to make the most of them, no matter whether it ends there or not. Got to be able to hit these in crunch time or any time for that matter. Call them free for a reason, right? Although they seldom ever are. Well, Allen takes advantage of one. Now he's got 10. A great test and didn't expect anything less in a rivalry game between Texas State and UTSA. The Bobcats trail the all-time series 34 to 24. They did lose last year on the road. UTSA is losing track of Blunt again. King over the top, offensive board. Ryovich, nice scoop. Big man working his way inside and gets rewarded for his efforts. A little window cleaning. And a career high 13 rebounds last year. That the trash and sweep it back up and in. And foul on the drive. Pearson will head to the line when we return. Texas State has finally grabbed the lead. Bobcats on top 65-64. Emmanuel King and Elko Prejovic, the bigs, going to work. in over three minutes, and Texas State has taken advantage. Bobcats trailed for most of this second half. They have grabbed the one-point lead, 65 to 64, and at the free throw line looking to extend. Well, they've made some shots from the outside tonight, but it's interesting to watch Danny Casper's unit kind of go through the back end of this ball game. They're going back to their bread and butter, which is pounded inside, and hope the bigs can get your basket in there. If not, get yourself to the free throw line. Battles in for Nigel Pearson. So when you lose four of your top five scorers, Pearson the only returning scorer of those top five. A lot of pressure to put on the 6'5 sophomore. 
He has handled admirably so far in the young season. Yeah, sophomores are the new seniors in college basketball, right? Nine points, six rebounds for Pearson tonight, and another turnover by UTSA, back-to-back -back possessions. The Roadrunners have coughed it up. Yeah, we talked about Blunt and his ability to score the basketball tonight, but again, this is a young man that he does his best work on the defensive side. He did a really nice job there getting to the ball and knocking it off the UTSA player. Ten turnovers for UTSA, wide open, three of it. We've got a Boston, Texas State doing a really good job executing here down the stretch, and now they've got themselves a two-possession ball game. And a 6-0 run here for Texas State. Jackson, deep three. There's no need to hurry, no need to panic. You still have a lot of time. A little bit of a forced shot there, especially when you're just coming off the bench. That was going to be the big question for a young UTSA team in its first road game. Panic, maybe, setting in with 2.30 left. That's yeah, going to be the question. Yeah, just a bad possession. I mean, with that's a, one of those yeah. you got to get that back in. Play some defense. Pearson gets it in. Hasn't been the best night shooting for Mr. Pearson, percentage-wise, but... He sure has been money down the stretch, whether it's hitting free throws or hitting threes in the corner. A surge by the Bobcats. Has him in front. Largest lead of the game for Texas State. And he's wide open in the corner. Not going to miss that one. Yeah, just 4 of 11 before he stepped into that one and smacking it home. This is a guy who was really the glue of Texas State last year as a freshman. Played a program record 1,182 minutes. That breaks down to 33 minutes per game. He almost never came off the court in his freshman season. Well, I think the biggest thing here now for UTSA is you can't give up any more points, Mike. I mean, you got a little over two minutes left to go in this game with the shot clock. You know, you're looking at maybe four possessions, so your margin for error is down to nil. As you trail in this ball game by seven. So UTSA is going to have to get some points on every one of their possessions. And more importantly, got to get some stops, too. But they missed their last five field goals. Haven't scored in four and a half minutes. And a turnover. Now the pressure of playing on the road. Your first collegiate basketball game. And Sometimes the body moves faster than the brain does, or vice versa. Another critical turnover for UTSA here down the stretch. And Texas State really executing the perfection here on every possession as they start to pull away. 11th turnover by UTSA. No hurry now for the Bobcats. For UTSA, do you almost foul or do you sell out and, and say, hey, if, they, if we play defense here, they literally cannot score with all the clock they're taking up. Nice play by Allen right there. Letting the offender thinks, think he has a step on you and make the deal with rejection right there at the last second. You know what we talked about? This was a rivalry. It's getting a little testy between these two players. A little fiery and chippy after those last couple possessions. Marlon Davis was in the face of Keaton Wallace after UTSA turned it over. And then after the block, Nick Allen stared down at Davis. So that's what you kind of like in a rivalry game, right? As it should be. That's absolutely right. I mean, there's no reason for these two schools to like each other. They haven't forever. Why should they start tonight? And bragging rights are big at both schools, especially when you talk about how many times these two squads have played each other in basketball throughout the years. So we'll see what UTSA does here. You're going to have to play one more suck in the defense on this shot clock. Hopefully you get the ball back. Really good chance right here to get the ball back and then see if you can at least try to get the scoreboard moving back in your favor. And then, yeah, you got to start fouling and shortening up this game. Shot clock at one. That'll be touch and go. Fade away. King. Play on. Hit the bottom of the rim. And UTSA, I think they might have just relaxed. Yeah, Texas get, State crashes in. Get everything but for the rebound. Now you got to foul. you got to shorten this game. Well, yeah, they did everything 
defense-wise, on the perimeter to force a tough shot. But you got to play through the rebound. And there was nobody around the basket except the big serve. <laughs> He had a huge corral for his squad and probably iced this game unless Texas State can't make its free throws down the stretch. He just tied his career high with 13 rebounds on that rebound and then put back. A massive effort from the 6'8 sophomore forward. Yeah, just one of those back-breaking plays at the end of the game where you've got to get the ball. And again, can't say enough about what Danny Casper's team has done here down the stretch. We watched them have a quote unquote shoot around for 90 minutes today. Looked more like a full board practice. They were getting after it. Paying dividends in the final minutes. And UTSA just can't find the basket right now. They've missed their last seven shots, and they haven't scored a field goal in over three minutes. Yeah, it's one of those things where you got a young team and really played outstanding basketball in a very efficient game in many ways. Except for about the last three minutes of this thing, and it's gotten a little sideways, and you know, it's going to be one of those games here. But you look at the box score and go, oh man, Texas State had its way, and that clearly was not the case. I mean, UTSA has played valiantly here tonight, and it's just gotten a little stupid here in the closing minute or two. Now this is when you look down the Roadrunners roster and realize just how young they are. Out of the starters, two sophomores, one freshman. And on the entire roster of guys who have played tonight, only two of them have been seniors. A lot of youth right there for UTSA. And Texas State, the home and the more experienced team, perhaps paying dividends, trying to hold on to the win. And once this game ends, we'll bring you all the action in the John Wayne Services post-game show. Interviews, highlights, a lot of three-pointers, spoiler, coming up in the highlight montage. The final stats and a preview of what's coming up next for both of these two teams as Texas State continues to lead. But that basket got UTSA back within breathing room, and this is where the one minute, two seconds feels like a lot of time here left in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's just college basketball. At its finest, you make a shot, immediately get a timeout and try to extend this game. But this is our first glance, and a lot of people's first glance, obviously, at Keaton Wallace. Just his second collegiate basketball game. And I'll tell you what, man, he's got a nice stroke. And he's he's got those great little twitch movements that you like in any sport. I mean, he's outstanding at creating just little crevasses for himself. They get the shot up, and then he knocks him down more often than that. You have moves like that? Are you kidding me? I'm getting, like, sore ankles just thinking about trying to move like that. Well, the home crowd into it with Texas State up 73-67. to 67. Trying to get some redemption after last year's loss. They fell 63-48. to 48. They're trying to get back into this series that UTSA leads 34 to 24. Yeah, and again, it's going to be a little bit of a slow build for Coach Henson, although I can't say enough of what UTSA was able to do last year in his first year, especially at home. I mean, they really turned the Convo Center into a pit like atmosphere and really did a great job protecting home court. And then, you know, Danny Casper, sure, they've got some guys to replace, but, you know, He's in the business for doing that. Won't be his first rodeo. The key is getting it across half court. Texas State does that. And now UTSA will be forced to foul. Wallace picks up the foul. That'll be his third. I think the challenge for Danny Casper, you know, how do you replace all those guys you lost, all that scoring production? But he has some nice size. He's got Nigel Pearson and if Tyler Blunt continues to play like this, stepping into the starting lineup for the first time this year. And he's got 19 points tonight. If you can get that production consistently, you know, look out. Yeah, I mean, the thing you like about him is he's not the tallest cat on the planet, but he's got a wide body, and he's just he's just one of those pit bull defenders. You know, he's going to get after you on that end. Then you get some offense from him as well. And again, you know, Davis is another one of their guards that they're going to be looking to get scoring from as the season goes along. But... You know, he had a little bit of a tough shooting night tonight, and then all of a sudden you get Blunt comes out of nowhere and gets really hot, and essentially that kept Texas State in the game for most of it. 
he traded threes back and forth with Javon Jackson to start the second half. That was a critical stretch. Blunt only had two points at halftime. He now has 20. And this is a guy who only averaged 2.8 points last year in a game. Team UTSA is going to maintain possession because yeah, look, it wasn't looking at what Priovich, Priovich that guy was called doing. By yeah, but because he was not the rebounder there, but he was underneath the hole. But that was a surprise to Texas State as well. They didn't realize UTSA was shooting free throws. Yeah, it's not going to make Danny Casper happy because that's the last thing you want to do is. Send UTSA to the line with a chance to cut into this lead and not take a single second off the clock. Fourth foul as well for Priovic. Fronin's had a quiet night, but gets his sixth point to go along with eight rebounds. Yeah, he's done a lot of little things though, hadn't he? Yeah, eight rebounds, three assists as well. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those guys you look in the box for, it's all of a sudden he's beat you a couple of different ways, although he's not taking a lot of shots. Another guy who's got very efficient game. Does commit the foul in the backcourt, and the walk all the way down to the free throw line for Marlon Davis. Now Davis, 0 for 8 from the floor, but five assists and two rebounds. This basket might be looking like it's the size of a needle right now for him. That's the problem if you're a shooter, man. Until you see that ball go in the hole sometimes, that basket gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and now the pressure's really on. Second one can't fall. Funny game, isn't it? Roadrunner's not out of it yet. Jackson straight away. Got it! Boy, that thing was nothing but the bottom of the net. Game on. Two-point game, 30 seconds left. Full court pressure by the Bobcats or by the UTSA Roadrunners. Roadrunners, I don't know if they're trying to foul right away. Texas State was having a lot of trouble getting that over. It was taking a couple of seconds. Only have 10 to get it across, but finally Fronin commits the foul. And yeah, with the way that Texas State has left free throws out there, this has paid off admirably for the Roadrunners. Yeah, something tells me though you fouled the wrong guy. That's one of those where you gotta know what the shooting percentages are for each man on the floor from the line. Pearson's the last guy you ought to be fouling, but if you take a look, the reason why we're even in a three-point game right now is Action Jackson stepping into a shot and knocking it down. That's a freshman and a lot of confidence in his stroke. Two very solid looking free throws from Nigel Pearson. Critical two possession lead. Scooping floater, Dave Nicolau, nice touch. Timeout, Pearson. It was getting close to that five call. It agonizes coaches when they see the ref hand shoot up. Well, I'll tell you what, Pearson doing the only thing he could do that time, and that's call timeout. Outstanding defense by UTSA to force the timeout. And again, they're going to have another inbounds play, so that's what you want to do. Try to apply as much pressure as you can. Try to deny the passer the inbounds pass, and then if they do get it in, foul immediately. Still one timeout left for Texas State. So if you get in trouble again, Pearson, who's been the inbounder, can fire that one. But always good to know in the back of your head that that is the last opportunity. And you can't do it again. And for UTSA, no timeouts left. So any miss, they will have to move quick. It'll be interesting to see what Coach Casper's over there drawing up because there's an infinite number of ways you can skin this cat. You can set some picks and try to free somebody up throw a long pass sometimes you get a Hail Mary on some of these plays because everybody's so worried about you know defending just half the court the literal play action fake going into football terms yeah run some guys run some screens run some curls do whatever you do but you got to get somebody free and get that ball inside or get that ball inbound I should say 
It's always interesting how defenses, how physical they try to be in this situation and to see what refs will let go because there is a lot of jostling and a lot of very aggressive pressure on both sides. Offense trying to get open, defense trying to deny in a situation like this, down to 21 seconds left. I'll tell you what, if all our games this year are this entertaining, we're in for a heck of a year. Well, Priovic will now inbound, not Pearson. Double team. Gets it out to Blunt. And he's fouled. So Fronin has committed three straight fouls to send these guys to the line. Luckily, he had no fouls before this foul spree. So not in foul trouble just yet. Well, no back pit picks or screens. Just Blunt being one of the quicker guys on the floor was able to get himself open. And now he's got himself to the free throw line with a chance to make this a two possession game. Two for four tonight. Did miss his last free throw. Swishes that one. Far and away, the most valuable guy on the floor tonight. 21 points for a guy you really didn't have any indication this was coming. Yeah, he had seven in the opener, but how about that leap in year two? He spent two years at New Mexico Junior College. This is second year at the Bobcats. We'll see how UTSA decides to play it. Shoot another three or try to pack it in. Day Nicolau got it! Whoa. <laughs> Shoot another three indeed. Uh, I guess why not? It's working so well for you. And one final timeout. No, a foul beforehand. So a foul before the inbound will walk Texas State down to the line. Yeah tells me I got you playing for two right here. I'm going to go down and drop a triple on them, make bad things happen in three to Texas State. Man, what a game. Now Jackson just committed his fourth. Feels like ages ago, but Jackson had a big three to bring it to a three-point game. And a gasp from the home crowd. Blunt left it short. But Danny Kowski grabbing the side of his skull. I don't blame him. Well, either way, a simple two-point field goal will tie or win for UTSA. He called your shot. Chance to win it right here. Jackson out of control and gets a foul call. The freshman, Javon Jackson, will go to the line to shoot two free throws. There's still 8.7 seconds left. Now you wonder, did he leave too much time? Well, again, you got a little bit of a run out here. Jackson showing off his speed. You can't worry about time on the clock right here. You've got to get the ball, and you got to get it in the hole. You'll worry about the rest of the clock later. And a little bit helter-skelter from Texas State on the defensive side. And now we'll see if Jackson can knock down some free throws and the crowd giving it to him. Big free throw from a true freshman. This was the test a road atmosphere for a young UTSA team, and they have responded to tie the game. Jackson has 14, chance to give the Roadrunners the lead. Got it. How about that? What a comeback. Boy, Coach Henson working this game to perfection to shorten it up, and then UTSA making all kinds of threes to keep chipping away and then hit their own clutch free throws to give themselves the lead. And a freshman knocking them down. Isaiah Gurley has come back in. Again, Pearson inbound. Eight seconds left, here comes Davis. Davis flip back, Gurley for three. Well off, Kane Nicolau gets it. And UTSA escapes with a win. Texas State is shocked. What just happened? Stunned disbelief right now from the Bobcats. One point win for UTSA when it felt like Texas State had locked this one down in the final minutes. Yeah, I mean, when they took that seven point lead, they did such a great job of being efficient with the basketball and scoring it. But you miss those free throws and you counter that with UTSA knocking down all kinds of three three pointers when really there wasn't a whole lot of pressure on those guys to make shots at that point because nobody thought they'd be able to come back anyway but they did 
Boy, did they. Day Nicolau, the one to celebrate UTSA 2-0 on the year. Plenty to recap. The John Wayne Service Company postgame show comes your way next. Post-game show, when you need heating, cooling, plumbing, or electrical help, make just one call to fix it all, 2110-293-6700. Chuck, I think there are some stunned fans and a lot of people in disbelief about what we just <laughs> saw in the final minutes of that game. And let's take a look at the play of the game. It's presented by Babe's Old Fashioned Foods. It was one to get UTSA back in it from their sophomore who has led them this whole night. Hey, I'm stunned too, man. I don't believe what we just watched. I mean, what a comeback by UTSA and the Italian Stallion knocking down a three-pointer. Giovanni Di Nicolo doing the damage there at the end. That was a brazen three-pointer. But, I mean, again, you know, they're chipping away and, you know, Initially, Texas State's making their free throws and being able to keep their distance. But you have to have a lot of bad things happen to watch a seven-point lead evaporate that late. And tip of the cap to UTSA for keep plugging and keep driving because when things weren't looking their way, they were the only ones that believed. Dave Nicolau, 17 points to lead the way. And let's take a look at that three and a couple more UTSA threes in the second half. Highlights are sponsored by the San Antonio Express News. Real news, real insights for over 150 years. Looked like it was all Texas State, but the Roadrunners started to claw back in it. Yeah, Dave Nicolau had a great game, 17 points and very shoot efficient shooting the ball too. And a lot of other guys chipping in. We saw Nick Allen had a big night and Action Jackson, young man from was born in Puerto Rico, also having a great game. But Blunt, you know, looked like this guy was going to be our game MVP for the damage he was doing on both ends of the court, both offensively and defensively. And Texas State, you know, taking advantage of their size in a lot of key situations tonight. And that was one of the reasons why they were afforded the big lead late. But it just was not meant to be because UTSA kept pecking away, pecking away. And boy, did they get a lot of big three-pointers down the stretch. I mean, De Nicolau wasn't the only one that was knocking down threes. We had Jackson, Wallace, everybody getting into the act for UTSA seemingly down the stretch. And again, you talk about this game, it would not have gone UTS, UTSA's way had Texas State not shot 58% from the free throw line. They just kept leaving the door slightly ajar until UTSA kicked it in late. They extended the game, and UTSA did take advantage. They nick allow the last five points for the Roadrunners. He is not, though, our player of the game. We do give that to the man who had a career high. So our Who's Rolling, presented by Roland Rentals and more, it is Tyler Blunt. Came in averaging two points per game, finished with 22 points per game on four for eight shooting. What an admirable effort, even in the loss. Well, I think Danny Casper, you know, we talked about it with him earlier today about how he's got to replace not only his starting point guard but also his starting two guard and he's going to do kind of catch his catch can here early in the season to see which guy is going to seize the moment well certainly blunt made a case for himself tonight running the point with what he was able to do on both ends of the court the final stats brought to you tonight by agb no store does more than agb at a three-point shooting and we talked about it 11 for 28 for UTSA and the second chance points. Yes, they favored Texas State with the size, but how about that field goal shooting by both teams? You know, it was such an evenly matched game. I think it's fitting that it comes down to a one point difference. No, I mean, it really is. I mean, if you look at these stats, I mean, kudos to Texas State too. I mean, ultimately they shot at a very high percentage from three point as well. But as you look at second chance points, the bench points, the blocks, the assists, Clearly, you look at the free throws, and my goodness, I mean, if you're going to leave 13 free points out there and your game is decided in the closing seconds, you can look at the free throws as one of the things that got the Bobcats tonight. UTSA, the one-point win. They improved to 2-0 on the season. The John Wayne Service postgame show continues. We'll be right back after this. now again for our John Wayne Service Company post game show it was you know just kind of baffling still how UTSA escaped with this win they were they were down nine points with a minute 10 seconds left yeah and what's interesting is if you look at the stats from the what minute 10 mark 
Texas State didn't miss all their free throws. They made five of them. So, you know, you just don't think that UTSA is going to come down and make every single three that they jack up. And, you know, again, it was great judicious use of their timeouts and the way, you know, Coach Henson was able to extend this game. That last-minute attempt seems like it took about a half hour to play, but we certainly got our money's worth, that's for sure. No, not a conference game. Texas State will enter the Sun Belt in a couple of weeks, but they fall to 0-2 on the season, and it's it's going to be a tough road. There are some good teams in that league. UT Arlington picked to finish first. Texas State was picked to finish sixth this year in the Sun Belt Conference, even after making that run to the conference title game. They fall to 0-2 on the season. Well, for the Roadrunners, they're 2-0, and and the Roadrunners scored 65 or more points tonight, so all day Sunday and Monday, you'll score for less with a 15% discount at all mattress and furniture for less locations. With three in San Antonio, it's beautiful inside. We will take a look now at our upcoming broadcast. A lot still happening in the Citywide Sports Network as we continue to recap this one. You, know, you almost never want to leave this broadcast, but we will go on to our next one. Our next basketball broadcast, December 8th on KCWX when Houston Baptist, December 9th rather, when Houston Baptist visits the UTSA Roadrunners at 7. Visit citywidesportsnetwork.com for our complete schedule of exciting college basketball games and football, CSN, where it all begins. So Chuck, before we wrap this one up, your final take on what was an incredibly balanced, well-played basketball Well, game. I think for Danny Casper's bunch, obviously this was a tough one to swallow, but it's going to be a slow build for them in Sun Belt Conference play. And remember, they got hot a lot late last year. For UTSA, a young team, remember, they only had two road wins a season ago. They got half that tonight. So I think in terms of building some early confidence and some goodwill amongst their young players there, this game will probably go a long way. That's a growing up kind of win right there for UTSA. The Roadrunners rally back from a nine-point deficit in the final minute and get the 79-78 to win to improve to 2-0 and on the season. Well, that'll do it for our broadcast tonight. Tonight's CSN telecast is a Learfield presentation with Quarter Moon Productions and the Texas State Sports Network. Good night from Strahan Coliseum on the campus of Texas State University in San Marcos. For Chuck McAtenick, I'm Mike Lefko. Final score, UTSA 79, Texas State 78.